Hey guys, this is Elisa. I have a step one slash step two question for you, uh, just to show you that a lot of topics between the exams can overlap. So go ahead and pause this, answer it on your own, and uh, come back with me. So a seven month old boy is brought to the physician by his parents for slowly worsening loss of muscle control and sleepiness. They've noticed several episodes of unresponsiveness with a blank stare and a fluttering of the eyelids. He does not maintain eye contact. He was able to roll over from front to back at five months of age and has not yet begun to sit or crawl. His parents are of Ashkenazi Jewish descent. Vitals are within normal limits. Neuro exam shows generalized hypotonia. Deep tendon reflexes are three plus bilaterally. Plantar reflex shows extensor response bilaterally. Fundoscopy shows bright red macular spots in both eyes. During the exam, the physician accidentally drops the tuning fork and the infant startles. Which of the following is the most likely cause of this patient's symptoms? And our answer choices are aryl sulfatase A deficiency, sphingomyelinase deficiency, alpha-galactosidase A deficiency, beta glucocerebrositis deficiency, beta hexosaminidase A deficiency, and galactocerebrositis deficiency. Um, generally, these questions are terrifying to students because uh, biochemistry is difficult. It's pure memorization. Um, and, you know, you thought you leave it, left it behind in step one, and it comes back for step two. So I think some of the most high yield topics for uh, biochemistry are these, you know, the lysosomal storage disorder, the sphingolipidoses, um, things that have a clinical correlate are always going to be important. So let's analyze this question. Um, it is a seven month year old boy, seven month old boy. Um, he has sleepiness, lack of muscle control. I'm going to highlight as I go. Um, and um, he has a blank stare and fluttering of the eyelids. So this is very specific um, for a child. It most likely means uh, a seizure. So he also doesn't maintain eye contact. That could mean a few things. He was able to roll over from front to back at five months of age. Okay, so that's normal. Hasn't begun to sit or crawl yet. Mm, starting to wonder. His parents are of Ashkenazi Jewish descent. That's extremely important for this question. Vitals are normal. Neuro exam shows hypotonia. And then deep tendon reflexes are increased. Plantar reflex is extensor. Um, fundoscopy, this is probably the most important thing, shows bright red macular spots in both eyes. And then the very big buzzword here is that the infant startles when the physician drops something. So um, I'm going to go ahead and move forward. And we're going to analyze these choices one by one. So we already analyzed the patient, but here it's written out in case you missed anything. Um, he has develop developmental delay. He has regression. Um, he has decreased eye contact. He has uh, Epson seizures, uh, you know, the unresponsiveness with a blank stare, decreased eye contact, hypotonia, exaggerated startle response, um, and then the classic bilateral bright red, cherry red spots on fundoscopy. That's all we need to know to answer this question. And if you don't already know it, stay tuned. So let's start with the first option, aryl sulfatase A deficiency. It, is a med it causes metachromatic leukodystrophy, um, and it can also cause de developmental delay, regression, um, and hypotonia starting at six months of age. And it presents with optic nerve atrophy, ataxia, and peripheral neuropathy. These are not present in our patient, um, but we do have the cherry red spots, which are not present in metachromatic leukodystrophy, as well as the startle response. So it can't be A. For B, we have sphingomyelinase deficiency. Now, this is Neiman Pick disease. This is a very high yield thing to know. Uh, this is a sphingolipidosis that causes developmental delay, which we have regression, hypotonia starting at six months of age. Great. Ashkenazi Jewish heritage. Yeah, that's consistent. It also presents with a cherry red spot on the macula. However, it presents with hepatosplenomegaly, which is important to remember, and it does not have a startle response. So now, uh, that, you know, this can't be our patient. Alpha-galactosidase A deficiency is Fabry disease. 
Now these patients present with severe distal limb pain due to peripheral neuropathy as well as angiokeratomas. Now that's a buzzword. It begins around uh, age 10 to 17, so a little bit later um, in a child's life. And it also presents, and um, usually this is the cause of death, but it presents with renal failure and cardiovascular disease between the age of 30 and 40. So it's definitely not our patient. Now, beta glucocerebrosidase deficiency, which is Gaucher disease. It's the most common of the sphingolipidoses. It's also Ashkenazi Jewish heritage, and it presents with hepatophlenomegaly, bone abnormalities, so you see pain, osteopenia, and pancytopenia in a child. Um, some of these, more, some of these uh, diseases can also cause seizures and developmental delay. However, our patient does not present with any of these um, findings. Now, beta-hexosaminidase A deficiency is also called Tay-Sachs disease. It causes intracellular accumulation of GM2 gangliosides in neural cells, and it causes neurodegeneration at six months, which is uh, consistent. And you see a uh, cherry red spot on endoscopy. Oh, look at that. As well as a startle response. And those of Ashkenazi Jewish descent are more prone to develop the disease. Well, that sounds like a pretty good option. And the last one is um, galactocerebrosidase deficiency, which is also crab disease. And it's a sphingolipidosis, which can cause developmental delay. And it presents with hypertonia, not hypotonia, as well as visual impairment secondary to optic nerve atrophy and peripheral neuropathy. Now, what's our answer? Tay-Sachs disease, right? You have the cherry red spot, you have a startle response, and it's due to accumulation of GM2 gangliosides. So um, the lack of hepatosplenomegaly differentiates this from um, above the neiman pick disease, so that's important to know. Um, and unfortunately, there's no cure, and the treatment is supportive, and the patients die of respiratory infections before five years of age. So. That's the end of our question. I hope you stuck with me through the end. Um, you know, these are hard to memorize topics, but I think they're important and high yield for the step exams. So good luck everyone and we'll see you next week.